In Forest Pack 5, we released a brand new feature called Forest Effects. This allows you to extend the existing features of Forest Pack by adding new functions from a library, importing them from effects files, or creating your own using expressions. Forest Pack 5 also includes a number of examples of effects that can be useful for your work and can act as a springboard to help you to learn to write your own. In this introductory tutorial, we'll demonstrate how effects are imported and used, including an overview of the built-in effects, how to run third-party effects, and how to install effects files to the library for easy access and reuse. Included in the download for this tutorial are also 10 new effects, which can be categorized into four different types. Firstly, there are the transform effects. These can be used to control the rotation, translation, or scale of scattered items. In the bend by exclude area example, scattered objects can be made to lean away from exclude areas, which is ideal for placing items on rugs. Secondly, there's tint effects. These can be used to control forest color maps. The change tint color by altitude effect changes the tint based on the item's altitude with a blend control to transition between two colors. Then we have item effects. Using the index of the geometry list, effects can be used to control which items are being scattered. In the two included examples, the geometry is changed based on the altitude or the item's proximity to a boundary. There's also a noise control to help disguise the transition. Finally, there are animation effects which are used to control the sampled frames. In four of the included examples, the displayed frame is changed depending on an item's proximity to include areas, exclude areas, or an object. You can also use an effect to lock or offset animation frames, which is useful if you want to use animation samples to vary geometry, as we illustrated in the randomizing procedural objects tutorial. And finally, it's even possible to animate objects procedurally. In the leaf fall animation effect, we've created a simple animation directly in Forest Pack. To get started, let's look at the effects rollout. Using this simple interface, you can control the parameters of any effect loaded into the Forest Pack object, load effects from the library, or launch the editor to create your own. To open the effects browser to view the presets that are included in the library, click this button. The effects browser allows you to navigate the effects that ship with Forest Pack, but it also allows you to install and manage your own effects or those obtained from a third party. Let's take a quick look at the browser interface and then load an effect. So starting from the top left, you have the library selector dropdown. This lets you change between different libraries and in a standard installation, you'll have two. The default library for the effects that ship with Forest Pack and a user's library for your own effects or those you've downloaded from others. If you make any changes to the libraries manually, you'd click the refresh button here to update the browser. The large pane on the left is the effects navigator. This displays a tree view of the effects in the selected library. It's divided into categories, which are similar to folders in that they provide a way of organizing your effects. When you select an effect, a description and a preview image will display in the main window. This is user definable, but would normally contain information and instructions on how to use this effect. Below this, you have an additional help button. Click this to go to a website with online help or more information about the selected effect. For our effects, this takes you to our documentation server, but if you create your own effects, you can add any URL here that you like. And once you've selected an effect and understand how it works by reading the description, to add it to Forest Pack, just click the load button. For example, in this scene, we have an island populated with some palm trees. At the moment, the trees are almost all upright, but in real life, trees near the edge of an area would normally lean outwards to maximize their exposure to available light. In Forest Pack 5, we include an effect to simulate this called Lean Out. To load this effect, all I have to do is go back to the Effects Browser, use the Effects Navigator to select Lean Out, make sure I read about the effect in the Descriptions pane so I understand how it's used, and then click Load, and that's all there is to it. And then when you've loaded an effect, its editable values are available in the parameters list. For example, this list has three editable parameters, a Lean Out amount, a lean out distance and random wiggle. Because we've read the description, we know that lean out amount determines the angle of the lean effect and positive values lean an object towards the boundary where negative values lean objects away. The lean out distance, which defines the size of the fall off from the boundary's edge that the lean out effect influences. Increase this to influence more trees at zero, the lean out effects will be disabled. 
And finally, random wiggle. This is used because lean out effect overwrites any existing randomized rotation, so this can be used to reintroduce a little bit of chaos. After configuring the lean out effect correctly, we get a much more realistic distribution of trees. Without effects, this would have been difficult to achieve without manually adjusting the scattered objects or using complex maps. You'll also see in the rollout a couple of other useful options. An on checkbox enables you to enable or disable the effect. And apply only at render time allows you to disable the effects in the viewport only, which is useful when an effect takes a little while to calculate, especially if you're scrubbing the timeline a lot because you're working on animations. That's really all there is to using the built-in effects, and most are easy to understand and use. A few, though, require you to set up Forest Pack in a specific way, and where this is the case, the details can be found in the description. So let's look at a few examples, starting with the tint effects. Tint by boundary and tint by object are two included effects that allow you to control a forest color map based on an item's distance from either an include spline or an object. Our tint based effects are set up to change the color from white to black so that a forest color map can be used to blend between two maps or materials. And to do this you have to set up the scene as follows. So in the material to blend between maps or colors I'm using a mix map and for clarity I'm just going to change the colors to red and green and then apply a forest color map to the mix amount slot. All forest color maps applied to the objects in the items list will be affected except those that have tint override turned on. So for this map to work as a mask, we need to make sure that this option is disabled. Then, in the forest objects materials rollout, the random strength value is still applicable. So for this tint effect to work, we need to set the start and end to 100%. Alternatively, I could use different values if I wanted to retain some randomization. And now we'll load the effect. I'll use tint by boundary. So open the effects editor, select the effect and click load. Now that it's loaded, we can see this is a simple one. In fact, the effect has only one parameter called distance to edge. If I increase this value and then click on render, the color of the scattered items blends between red and green based on their distance from the nearest edge of an include area. So that's tint effects. Some effects may also require you to pick an object from the scene. For example, the bend by object effect is similar to the lean out one demonstrated earlier, except in this version, the scattered items are rotated based on their proximity to an object in the scene instead of an include area. To use it, you select the object property in the parameters list. Click the object picker button and select a geometry object from the scene. And now you can use the lean out amount and lean out distance and random wiggle parameters just as we did earlier to bend the scattered items based on their proximity to the selected objects. You can also drive effects based on the tracks of any other object in the scene. For example, we'll use the displacement size track of a V-Ray displacement modifier to position trees on the Z axis. If you use displacement maps to create terrain, then you'll be aware that this can be an issue when you're combining it with Forest Pack. Forest needs to read the height information on the terrain before render time in order to correctly place the objects, but this information isn't available if you're using displacement. This render represents the problem. The displaced surface, as you can see, is not detected by Forest Pack, and the trees go under the hills. Forest 5 includes an effect called Scatter on Displaced Surfaces that allows you to position the objects on the Z-axis to match the displaced mesh, with additional controls to randomize each object's position on the Z-axis. To use it, you would add items to the geometry rollout in the usual way. Make sure Forest Pack is aligned with the displaced plane on the Z-axis. Go to the Transform rollout and make sure you enter a value of 100% for both the Z-minimum and Z-maximum parameters. And then activate Z-map and turn on Probability Map. In the Probability Map slot, Apply the same displacement texture as is used on the plane to this map input slot. Then in the distribution rollout, you need to set the collision height to 100%. Once this value has been changed, collisions can be turned off uh, if you don't need them. Go to the effects rollout and click displacement size. Select the amount controller of the V-Ray displacement modifier or a similar plugin that's applied to the surface. The tree's Z positions are now driven by this value and changing the parameter also automatically updates Forest Pack's distribution. And if you render now, you'll see that the objects are moved to the surface of displaced geometry. If you'd like to import an effect supplied by us or another user, then Forest Pack makes this process simple. To illustrate, 
I'll import the leaf fall effect included in the downloads for this tutorial. This effect is designed to create a simple leaf animation for those times when you don't need something as complex as a particle system. And to load it, follow these steps. From the effects rollout, open the effects editor. We'll look at this interface in more detail in a future tutorial. For now, just click import to open the file selector. Find the effect file that you want to import, in this case ffxleaffull.eff. Forest effects are saved in .eff files that include all the necessary data, including the expression itself, parameters, a description, plus any other information and preview images. They're designed to be small, portable and easy to share, and when you've selected one, you just click open. In the effects editor you'll now see the expression, and over here the parameters that are used. You don't need to touch any of this, just click OK to evaluate the expression and close the editor. And the effect is now working and you can see and adjust the parameters as follows to see how it works. You'd use start frame to enter the time at which the item should start spawning, and end frame to enter the time at which the item should stop. Use start height minimum to define the minimum randomized starting height for scattered items, and start height maximum for the maximum randomized starting height for scattered items. We can go now and define the minimum and maximum speed, which will be randomized for the scattered items. And if we scrub the timeline, we can see that the objects are starting to fall to the ground. If you want to introduce some randomized rotation as well, use start rotation minimum and start rotation maximum to define the range for the starting rotation of scattered items. And click play. And there you go, an entirely procedurally created animation just using forest effects. The effects library is fully editable, so it's easy for you to add effects if you'd like to access them regularly. To do this, you just open the effects browser window, and from here you'll see a library drop-down above the navigator. The default library contains the effects that ship with Forest Pack, and this can't be edited. But the second object is the users library, and this is where you save your own effects. In this example, we're going to add the 10 new effects to the users library. But rather than just add them in one long and confusing list, let's get organised. Effects are grouped using categories, and to add them, all you need to do is right-click on the tree navigator and select Add New Category. An Add New Category window will then open, asking you to name it. For this, we'll enter Animation Effects and click OK. And then do the same for Transform Effects, Tint Effects, and Item Effects. You'll now have four categories in the navigator view. And though not demonstrated here, categories can be nested so that you can organise them in any way that you like. Now the categories are set up, we can add the effects. To illustrate, here's how you'd add the Animate by Distance to Exclude effect to the Animations category. Right click on the Animation Effects category and select Import Effect. Select the F Effects Animate by Distance to Exclude Boundary.eff file from the download for this tutorial and click Open. The EFF file will be moved to the user's directory and will now be available whenever you need it from the browser. It's also possible to add effects manually by simply copying them to the effects directory. And to do this, you'd right click on a category and select Open in Shell to find the location where effects are saved. Then all you need to do is copy the .EFF files to this location. And once you've moved all your files, just make sure you open the library browser and click Refresh to see the updates. In fact, it's actually possible to organise your entire library this way if you choose. Just add folders for new categories and add the .eff files where you'd like them. Remembering to click refresh to update the browser if you make any changes. Once your new effects have been added, they're ready to use. To illustrate, I'll quickly show how the animation effects are set up using the animate by distance to exclude area effect, but the same applies for most of the animation effects we've released so far. First of all, go to the animation rollout and change the mode to frame from map. Enter a start and end value to define the range. These are the frames that are controlled by the effect. For example, for an object with a 35 frame animation at the start of the timeline, you would set the end value to 34 and leave the start on zero. Since we added it in the previous step, we can load the animate by distance to exclude area script using the effects browser. At present, there's not a way for effects to access the number of samples to find in the animation rollout, so we need to enter it manually using parameters. To do this, for this effect, enter 35, the total number of frames, in the samples parameter. And then finally, you can enter a falloff value to define the size of the exclude area's influence. 
When the exclude area is now moved or animated, the animation of the scattered objects is driven by the proximity to this spline. Feel free to check out the other animation effects included in this tutorial, they work in a very similar way. In this tutorial we've demonstrated that using and managing effects is an easy and powerful new feature. We've looked at how to import existing effects, load them from the library and add them to the browser as well as focusing on a few key examples to help get you started with using them in your work. In a future tutorial we will look at how to create your own effects using the simple expressions editor. But if you want to start creating your own effects now and you can't wait until then, please feel free to check out the detailed documentation for information on how to get started and please feel free to share your efforts in our forum.